Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. This is Amanullah. You are watching my YouTube channel, Dr. Aman's video. Dear viewer, today we are going to learn about the biochemical identification of bacteria in clinical bacteriology. Before starting biochemical identification of bacteria, I would like to tell you that in clinical bacteriology, the primary task of a microbiologist or a technologist is to identify a possible pathogen in the different clinical specimen received to the bench of clinical bacteriology. So for the identification of bacterial pathogen, first we use the morphology of the colony on the plate and if we need then we perform gram stain in order to see the gram reaction, the morphology of the cell and the arrangement of the cell under microscope. But these two tools only provide presumptive identification or preliminary identification of a bacterial pathogen in different clinical specimen. Therefore, for the confirmation of that preliminary or presumptive identification, we aid biochemical test for the identification of bacteria. Now what is the basic concept behind the biochemical testing of bacterial pathogen? is we know that bacteria is a prokaryote and it perform metabolism. So in biochemical test, we use a special or a unique metabolic characteristics of bacteria for its identification. So there are different metabolical aspects which are used for the identification of bacteria in terms of biochemical test. For example, there are certain bacteria which produced a particular or a special enzymes which are not produced by other bacteria. So therefore, by identification or by detection of that enzymes, we can make the identification of that particular bacteria. So the first aspects of metabolism or the first rules used for the biochemical test is the detection of single enzyme. So there are some important biochemical tests which are based on the single on the detection of single enzyme. For example, you may have listened the name oxidase test. Oxidase test is based on the detection of oxidized enzymes because there are some pathogen or some bacteria which produced oxidase enzymes while the other do not. So therefore, we can make differential diagnosis or differential identification of bacteria on the basis of oxidase enzymes or you can say catalase enzymes. Catalase enzyme is commonly used for the differentiation of Staphylococcus aureus from for the species of Staphylococcus aureus from Streptococcus and Enterococci because Streptococci and Enterococci do not produce catalase enzyme while Staphylococcus while the species of Staphylococci produce catalase enzyme. So this is the one aspect of metabolism which is single enzyme and that single enzyme is used for the identification of bacteria in terms of different biochemical tests like oxidase test, catalase test, urease test, ONPG test and there are a large list of tests which is used for the detection of single enzyme. Second could be the aspects of the detection of special metabolical pathway. So in this case, we try to detect a metabolic pathway which is used by a pathogen or which is used by a bacteria. So in case of metabolic pathway, we use a different assay for different metabo metabolic pathways. Like for example, we can use assay for the fermentation of carbohydrate. For example, the most common test which is used in bacteriology for the carbohydrate fermentation is triple sugar iron commonly known as TSI. 
TSI is a medium which is used for the detection of carbohydrate fermentation. On the basis of different carbohydrate fermentation, we can differentiate or we can identify bacteria. For instance, among gram negative bacteria or among enterobacter AC, E. coli is a lactose fermenter. It means that E. coli can ferment lactose while salmonella or proteus is not able to ferment lactose. So therefore, you can differentiate these two bacteria on the basis of carbohydrate fermentation. So one aspect is the carbohydrate fermentation which is used under metabolic pathways or secondly you can use the decarboxylation or I am not writing the full words we can use decarboxylation or deamination of amino acids. So different bacteria has the ability to decarboxylate or deaminate, decarboxylation is the removal of carboxyl group from amino acid and deamination is the removal of amino group from the amino acid. So different bacteria has ability to decarboxylate or deaminate different amino acid. So we can use different amino acid under decarboxylation or deamination de reaction for the identification of bacteria. Third, we can use a single substrate utilization. Some bacteria has the ability to use a special substrate for its utilization. In that case, we use that special utilization of a single substrate for the identification of that bacteria. For example, the common test is citrate utilization test or Simon citrate utilization test. In this case, citrate is used as a sole source of carbon for the uh, for the sorry citrate is utilized by certain bacteria as a sole source of carbon while other cannot use substrate uh, citrate as a substrate so in this case we can differentiate different bacteria on the cases on the basis of single substrate utilization and citrate utilization test is one biochemical test which is based on this principle number 3 or I would like to rub some of the material from my board. So number three, we can use inhibitory profile against certain bacteria. There are some bacteria which carry inherited resistant or inherited sensitivity towards a particular antibiotic or chemical. By, in, by word inherited resistant or inherited sensitivity, we mean that, that all the cells of that bacteria will be sensitive or will be resistant to a particular antibiotic or chemical always. So therefore, you can use that unique or peculiar characteristics of that bacteria for its identification. So there are certain inhibitory profiles. For example, the most common is bacitracine sensitivity. Bacitracine is an antibiotic and the disc of this antibiotic is used for the differentiation of different bacteria like commonly we make use of this bacitracine sensitivity in clinical bacteriology for the differentiation of group A streptococci and group B streptococci. Group A streptococci is streptococcus pyogen and group B streptococci is streptococcus eglaxiae because they gives similar appearance in under microscopes and on the surface of uh, blood agar. Therefore, we apply bacitracine disc on the carpet growth or on the loan of these two bacteria. So group A streptococci is sensitive while group B streptococci is always resistant to bacitracine. So therefore, we can use certain inhibitory profile 
for the identification or differentiation of different bacteria. Bacitracine sensitivity is one example. There are there is a large number of tests which is used which use this inhibitory profile like noobicin sensitivity, bile solubility, sulfamethoxazole sensitivity, noobicin sensitivity, and many more. Finally, besides these three approaches, we use different other aspects of the metabolism for the identification of bacteria. So, those approaches will come under the headings of others because here we sum up the different approaches. So, under the other approach, I would like to tell you like in this case, we the basic concept is same that we take a special or unique metabolic property of a bacteria for its identification. So, in this case, we can use bile escoline test. In bile escoline test, the organism or the bacteria is responsible to degrade escoline in the presence of bile and bile escoline test is commonly used for the identification of enterococci. Yeah, the two important species of enterococci is uh, are enterococcus facium and enterococcus faecalis. So, there are certain other aspects of bacterial metabolisms or bacterial nutritional abilities which are used for the pre uh, which are used for the definitive identification of bacteria. So, this is the basic concepts of biochemical tests which are used for the identification of bacteria. In the upcoming lecture, we will discuss different biochemical tests, but this is the background or the concept behind the biochemical testings. Traditionally or conventionally, we perform these biochemical test usually in different test tube like you can see this is a test tube. Therefore, in, in some cases we rely on single or two biochemical test for the identification of bacteria while in some other cases sometime we need 5 to 6 or 10 biochemical tests for the identification of a single bacteria. Therefore, it results in a very laborious and time consuming and resource consuming when you perform many tests in conventional ways in test tubes. Therefore, these trend has been changed in mini authorization of the biochemical test. Therefore, I would like to tell you about the mini authorization of biochemical test because nowadays people prefer to use mini authorized biochemical test. First of all, I would like to write the word mini authorize. So, what do we mean by mini authorization of the biochemical test? I would like to tell you first about only mini authorization. Mini authorization is the any process through which you prepare the small or the uh, through which you prepare any instrument or any chemical or any test in a very minute quantity using modern technology that is known as mini authorization and that mini authorized scale prepare instrument or test perform the same function and it results in the uh, in the it results in the many benefits like it is cost effective, it is time effective, it is easy to handle, it is not laborious and many more benefits are here of mini authorization. So, in case of mini authorization of biochemical test, the first and the most commonly used mini authorized biochemical strip was the API 20 which was used for the identification of enterococci. What, what actually was done in miniaturization of biochemical test? All the biochemical test or all the reagent of biochemical test were prepared in a small plastic strips. 
and instead of a large test tube the reaction the chemical for the reaction was prepared in a small capsule or a small bunch so it was like this a strip with a small capsules and the reagent of each test was prepared in these small capsule like it was oxidase test it was urease it is urease test it is catalase test and it is onpg test it is glucose carbohydrate fermentation it is lactose fermentation so many more so you can do 10 to 20 test on a short small strip and it give more accurate result than the conventional test tube so this is known as mini arterization of the biochemical test because we prepare biochemical test on a small minute scale rather than the large bio, large test tubes and a large amount of chemical and reagent utilized for the biochemical test conventionally so this is the mini arterization of biochemical test now mini arterization has been replaced by the automation in developed countries people use automation in order to save the time and to give the early diagnosis or early identification of the bacterial pathogen in different clinical specimen i should uh, i shall stop here today and this is enough about the biochemical identification of bacterial pathogen and i would request to please subscribe my youtube channel dr aman's video and also hit the bell icon in order to get notification for my upcoming video thank you so much for watching my youtube channel free amanillah